Unfortunately, when we just started beating by uh, by ourselves, it was around five till seven percent of reply rates. After three or four months of say Geek Radar, we've increased the tower average reply rate to fifteen percent. Time response rate also was so uh, very high with Geek Radar. It was around nine or ten minutes, and we won. Uh, Beaten by our own, it was around two hours. Do you have any success stories or achievements that were made possible through using a great R? Increased our team like in two times. So I would say it was a big boost for our own agency and team. I believe everyone will find the like ideal workflow working with the Geek Radar. And yeah, hopefully one day each of you will become a millager. Hey guys, welcome to the third episode of the Geek Radar podcast interview. Today we have with us uh, Max Redko from IT Squad. Uh, Max, could you please introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your Upwork agency and some other short words. Yep, sure. Welcome everybody. So, yep, basically my name is Max. I'm 23 years old since uh, so basically I have uh, five years of experience in the web development. And last year I've decided to own my own agency, which is called IT Squads. We've already been working for one year and continue growing our team. Um, yep. So basically, I would say it's mainly it's uh, about our specialization. We are mainly focused on the web development of the e-commerce stores. Ninety percent it's on you know, Shopify and are the same as platforms. Awesome. Okay. And uh, regarding the format of this podcast, so first I'm going to ask you some questions regarding Upwork in general, and then I'm going to ask you some specific questions in regards to GigRadar and your use cases and success stories with it. Uh, so my first question for you is, how did you get started on Upwork and why did you choose Upwork specifically? Yeah, I would say a lot of my friends and some other colleagues who are starting their own businesses in the web and IT industry are starting with Upwork. It's a, quite a huge pierce of the freelance work. So we also decided to go this way. We found a lot of opportunities there even before we started working, uh, even when I was uh, younger and I was freelancing, I also used it. To use Upwork for finding some kind of job in the web development niche. So we decided also to get started with it. And it, I would say it was the right decision. And how long have you been kind of in the freelance world? Like how long have you been doing freelancing? Uh, before I started uh, working on some companies, I would say it's, it was around two years I've been freelancing before I get started with my own agency. As an Upwork agency owner yourself, uh, what strategies have you found most effective for finding success on Upwork? I would say it was quite a long way of testing different hypotheses, testing different uh, ways of how we are we going to find the leads, how we filter them, and so on. But yeah, anyway, we found our like I would say even ideal way how to do this. But yeah, I would say it's pretty simple. But anyway, it's still working. So it's just a common, uh, common funnel of the sales and Upwork. So we're just starting with a filter in the jobs. Uh, I would say it's step one. Then we are proceeding with uh, writing the bits or cover letters. Step two. Then when client is answering to us, we have already built our own scripts, how to answer them, how to uh, pitch them, how to ask them to join the calls and on the calls. Uh, that was our main step where we have then finalized its customers to sign a contract with us. Okay. So you basically have like your own, some like three or four step process that you follow and usually, and it takes you some time to kind of build this process, but once you figured it out, you've been pretty much using it um, solidly for like the last, for however long you've been doing this, right? Yep, exactly. Because uh, at the time I started, I didn't have any kind of the management system or any person who was responsible for it. So everything was on my shoulders. I've been as a lead gen, as a pre-sale manager, as a sale manager, one person also as a technical guy at the same time. But then we built a system where we had all of this position, uh, which been uh, suited by different people. And how long uh, were you an Upwork freelancer before you and decided to turn it into an agency. As I already mentioned, it was like approximately two years uh, oh, freelancing right. than just working as a uh, normal employee. And then again, decided to move to the own agency. What tips can you give for writing winning bids and proposals on Upwork? Okay. Yep. I would say they're pretty common, but most of them are working. Of course, uh, for the rules and the logic is changing each day, but some of the tips that I can give, uh, I think still working. 
So first of all, of course, I think you'll find this everywhere that starts your proposals or bits within hi and then using, if it's possible to find the client's name, it would be like a great personalization tip. Also, it would be nice to use some kind of uh, uh, saying hello in different languages, depending from where your client, if it's a Guten Tag or a Hola, or if it's from Spain, it's also kind of a personalization, which is in 2024 year, uh, have a crucial role in your bits. Also then try to be uh, very specific about what you're writing on. Don't write like I'm doing the web development, be more specific. I'm doing the e-commerce stores. I'm doing the e-commerce stores in the health and beauty niche and so on. This will make you like a more unique person when the client will be choosing from the different guys who also will send him the same things. Also, uh, the third one tip, I would say it's uh, your bit shouldn't be so long, but at the same time, it shouldn't be so short. So try to be uh, related with the, with the long of the job post and send like approximate same way uh, your proposal with an approximately same amount of words there. So just not to be overwhelming when you write into uh, too long uh, bits to not waste too much time with your client when they will be reading it. And also, of course, uh, one of the main things here is to finalize your bits with an CTA call to actions and try to like maximize the uh, uh, introduction and so try to finalize it with, hey, let's uh, hop on a call, let's jump on the call and so on. So just it shouldn't be just an, like an article or something like that. Your bit should have some goal and in final you should like have a call with your client and then it will be much more easier to uh, make him a lead when you have a personal talk with him because until you uh, just chatting with him, you're just a regular person who can be even not real for them. Somebody thinks so. So when you send your cover letter, you write some something not too long, but also not too short, and you have the link to schedule a call right away, right in the in the very first message. Or do you wait to have the link like later down the conversation, or do you place the link right away? Basically, by Upwork rule, I would say it's not uh, allowed it to paste any kind of link to uh, be connected outside of Upwork. But uh, most of our uh, bits and our friends also using this tactic, they're just connecting some kind of uh, Google links to the calendar, or the Calendly links, which mm -hmm. also can be working. Uh, we didn't have any problems with it yet, but yeah, just for you to know that uh, from the last updates of their policy, it wasn't forbidden. It wasn't loaded, but uh, anyway, even you don't uh, attach any link, you can then, if customers, if clients is asking to use and continue uh, to like forcing them to the call inside of your messaging room on Upwork. Perfect. Thank you. And kind of, uh, we talked about this briefly, but what are your best practices for communication with clients on Upwork? Yeah, uh, it basically depends on the way how we connected with the clients because it could be just a normal proposal or bits. It also could be the direct message from the client, and it also could also be the interview system where a client invites you to the job. And for all of these three cases, we have a different scripts where, which our pre sales manager are using. And uh, basically, it's uh, pretty common just starting with some like easy introductions that, hey, um, lead guy is just saying that he is, for example, the deliver delivery manager in our agency, and he want to make sure that uh, we'll find a fit. And then, of course, uh, they are inviting the client to the call anyway to explain some things or to make sure we understood each other and uh, find all the details in the same way. And so, uh, yeah, so basically, I would say communication should be until you just have a call with him, trying to be as much official as possible. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. But yeah, anyway, I think a good person will understand the uh, the vibe of the client, and uh, in this way, also should continue communication. If he's live, if he likes using a lot of emojis, just continue using emojis. If he prefers more official communications, and just do it this way because you also want to make sure you like and the uh, client will like you as well. And yeah, so basically, I would say communication is quite an important thing when you're trying to get leads. So I would say it's uh, pretty unique and each person should be like, should understand like some basic uh, knowledge about how to communicate with clients. 
what I understood, based on how the client communicates with you, you want to communicate the same way back with him. So as you said, if he's more casual, try to be more casual. If he's more like business specific, try to be more business specific and kind of match his vibe. Um, are there any like absolute like things you should definitely not do in communications or things that you should definitely do? Just like some kind of golden nuggets or some some things you've learned over the years about, you know, things you absolutely must not do and things that actually really help that maybe not everybody would know. Yeah, we're trying to collect all of these uh, cases and features that we're using during the communication. But anyway, each case is unique and you can't like guess uh, what will be the next step from your client. But uh, I would say we don't have any like uh, strict rules when we're communicating. We're just trying to be uh, very patient with the answers. We just want, don't want to force anyone to call with us. But at the same time, we're doing this anyway. But we're doing it uh, in a really kind manner. But uh, yeah, I, I won't like, suggest any specific rules here. Just trying to be yourself and uh, hopefully this will work for you. Okay, fantastic. Now uh, let's move on to the gig radar specific questions. So before gig radar, uh, what did your lead generation look like on Upwork? How was it set up? Before we had a lot of employees, I've been doing everything by my own. So uh, as I already mentioned, it was three steps way of how we've been finding the leads. So I've been searching the Upwork search dashboard, uh, job dashboards, and just filtering the clients uh, using the, our own ACP, uh, then just bidding them. Then we will, uh, when we've been uh, getting the replies, I've been talking to them, then we out the calls to them. And then just in case we've, we found a fit, then we just uh, signed it a contract on Upwork or just outside it. That was a previous job, but uh, yeah, then I would say in three or four months ago, after we started, uh, we've already hired at that moment the lead generation manager, which been doing the work of the filtering the job post and pitting the clients. Uh, then we also find the pre-sale manager who've been pitching them to start the communication uh, in the Google Meet or inside the Zoom. It's also as a second step of our sales panel, we've hired a sales manager who've been together with me, hoping on the last calls of the before the signing the contracts. And that was uh, the workflow we had. Would you say that this workflow was efficient and effective? I won't say so because any kind of workflow needs an optimization. And yeah, we realized that that's why we actually found the gig radar and started using it. So how did you learn about gig radar and kind of what made you decide to want to give it a try? Basically in Ukraine, we have a lot of communities of business owners. So first, uh, where I heard about the gig radar, it was top rated club. Um, some of the people of there, some business owners already used it, or at least uh, mentions that gig radar exists. Also when the chat GPT just was released, it, uh, everybody thought that, uh, the lead generation problem can be solved with somehow with it. And at the same time, I also found some. Uh, like uh, Google it, some kind of software that is, could be working with an Upwork as a lead generation manager, and I found GigRadar. How has GigRadar influenced your proposal quality and reply rate from potential clients? Approximately when we just started bidding by, uh, by ourselves, uh, it was around 5 till 7% of reply rates we've been, when we've been doing uh, the job manually. But since we've launched Kikrodar, played around one month with it, this and different hypothesis, uh, then after three or four months, so to say, Kikrodar, we've increased it our average reply rate to 15%. So oh. from time to time, it was uh, by 12, but sometimes it also was 20, 25 as max. So just depending on the specific niche or the specific filters that we have been using for. But yeah, an average was increased in two or even sometimes three times uh, than we had before with speaker there. And do you think that it's because of the the quality of the cover letter or is it because the replies or the, the cover letters are sent very fast after the jobs are being written or maybe a mix of both? What do you think is the, the main reason that you know, these proposals are getting such high reply rates from your experience. Yeah, I think it was a uh, sum of different metrics. Time response rates also was so uh, very high with Gikrodar. It was around nine or 10 minutes when we will, when we won, uh, 
between by our own it was around two hours so i think it also makes sense also we can't like be 24 hours per day um and geekrida can do this so it's also something related to the response time also the ideas of the geekrida uh, ai assistant was uh, something different from what we used to use inside our cover letters so i, I thought it's also making a lot of really crucial role inside this uh, bidding proposals uh, workflow. So yeah, I would say all of these metrics making sense. Uh, and I think that's why we've been uh, increasing our own reply rate. Do you have any success stories or achievements that were made possible through using Gigradar? Yep, I, I think so. Because uh, in July of the past year, We've increased our team like in two times because we had so many jobs after we started using the Geek Radar. So I would say it was a big boost for our own agency and team. So we're really uh, happy that we found friend, I would say, for us as Geek Radar, and it's really supported us in our growth. Fantastic and great to hear that. Okay, uh, so that was actually my last question. Uh, Max, thank you again for coming on this interview and answering the questions. I'm glad to hear that GigRadar has been super helpful for you in your uh, Upwork agency. And the fact that it has led to such great growth is fantastic to hear. So do you have maybe any final words for our viewers? Anything you'd like to add before we wrap up? Yeah, I just say that uh, try to maximize your proposals, rates, and so on with the GigRadar because it's a really powerful tool. Uh, it's, I don't say it's like, we'll start working after one day you start using the geek radar, you need to play around it, try and different hypotheses, try and different filters and so on. But one day, I believe everyone will find the like ideal or pole working with the geek radar. And yeah, hopefully one day each of you will become a millionaire. <laughs> All right, Max, thank you so much for your time. Yep. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.